Welcome students to a new set of notes. This is titled Conflict in American Identity 1607 to 1783. We're going to look at different sections of American identity. This is just a brief look. This is by no means extensive, but let's begin. Title this Conflict in American Identity. The question that I asked you was, how would you describe American culture? And this is going to look at how does American culture develop in brief. Western Civilization Part 1, East versus West. So when we look at civilization, civilization is a shared heritage, traditions, values, and we have basically two major schools of thought. We have Western and we have Eastern. Western civilization, Western thought, comes from Athens, Greece, and deals with ideas of independence, freedom, entrepreneurship, capitalism, competition, even rationalism is within there. Eastern school of thought is more into harmony, balance, respect, family, spirits, versus the Western rationalism as you see with the balance of the yin and the yang, the Navajo sun you see there. Uh, so you have two different schools of thought. Neither is better than the other, but the Western school of thought has come from Athens, Greece, and spread to Europe with the Renaissance, and then came over to America with the age of exploration, especially with the English. The Eastern school of thought has been in countries and continents such as Asia, Africa, the Middle East. And also, Native Americans brought an Eastern perspective with them when they came over to America across the Bering Strait a thousand years ago. And so, when the Americans, or the Europeans, who become what we call Americans, uh, bring their Western culture, that comes in conflict with this Eastern culture, especially of the Native Americans. This idea of independence and freedom that we value so much, and entrepreneurship, meaning business risk taker, uh, capitalism, competition, sports and such, as we love with competition and, and different entrepreneurs and businesses competing with one another, it really comes in conflict with the, the harmony and the balance uh, that existed in America with the Native Americans. So much so that we will have the colonization part two, Spain, France, and England. Spain, they are going to come to the New World looking for gold and spreading God, kind of religion and uh, spreading religion with their conquistadors, their conquering, kind of a last crusade of sorts. This was during the Spanish Inquisition in Spain, the Reconquista, and the Reconquista of Spain would also be the conquistadors of the New World. However, their interaction with these Native Americans that are more into an Eastern mindset, as Spain brings their Western mindset, is more of forced labor and forced conversion. Spain would be Roman Catholics, and the Spanish friars or padres or Franciscans. France, on the other hand, that is also Catholic, and they're Jesuits, they would make more of a trade partnership with the natives. And because of that trade partnership, you will also have a sense of mixing religion. Both Spain and France intermarried with the natives, but Spain was more of a forced conversion, forced labor, which would lead to resentment with many Native Americans and later revolts such as the Pueblo Revolt of the late 1600s. The French, however, are mixing with the Natives and more tolerant of animist spirit worship. And so you kind of have a uh, French Catholicism that is mixed with the spirit worship. England, on the other hand, has this frontier of exclusion, an important vocab term to know, which isolated them in commerce and religion. Though in 1607, John Rolfe and Pocahontas would marry with uh, John Smith as captain, uh, there would be a harmony, 
so to speak, and also in 1620, the Powhatans and the separatists, known as the Pilgrims, would also have their own harmony, actually in 16, uh, 1621, a year after their first uh, settling, the first Thanksgiving as we call it. There would be a sense of harmony, but it's very short-lived, and that's because the English, they don't want to mix religion. They want to stay isolated. Uh, and so you kind of have the first example of segregation in America, and uh, though maybe to some it was a racial intended segregation, most of it is religious because they don't want the Native Americans to uh, interfere with their religion. However, you will have a few English missionaries like David Brainerd and others that will reach out to the natives and bring the hope of the gospel to them. But the question remains, which one of these three did it best? Is it best to force religion on people? Is it best to just be kind of loose with religion and, and have no transcendent truth? Mix the religion? Or should it just be a standoffish, not even seeking to convert the natives? Kind of a uh, reformed predestination idea, which is what the... Puritans ended up uh, mainly believing. Well, I think that God's truth transcends all three. God's truth is not cultural. God's truth does not see Eastern or Western as better, but as both just shadows of the truth. And that Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, embodies 100% Western, 100% Eastern, and is the better option. So I think that all three of these got it wrong because they looked at this issue as tribal, as us versus them, instead of seeing the natives as individuals who are equal in the image of God, as we see in Scripture, and in need of salvation, but in need of respect as well, which was not given. As we see here, we have three different groups of colonies. You have the New England colonies in the north, you have the middle colonies, four of them. And then you have the southern colonies in the south. There's five of those. And they each would have their own identity. Now when we ask, you know, when, when I ask students, why was America founded? Why did the English come to America? Oftentimes they get one answer and not the full answer. Let me give you the full answer. we got southern, middle, and New England, all for different reasons. Virginia, Jamestown, 1607. Single men are mainly coming to the New World, and they're usually looking for gold at first, but then realize that there's not much gold, so they resort to a single economy, a cash crop, known as tobacco, and that becomes a big economy. So the cause of their establishment of Virginia, Jamestown, the first permanent colony, was entrepreneurship, business, economy. Oftentimes, people remember just simply New England, 1620, the Plymouth Pilgrims, the Separatists that separated from the Anglican Church, separated from the Puritans that stayed behind in England to purify the church. And they were mainly comprised of families. They brought their wives with them and their children. They had a mixed economy because they weren't focused on economy. So you have a lot of shipping, a lot of fishing, a lot of manufacturing and some farming and agriculture. The cause is going to be religious liberty. And so they come over here for religious liberty. Now, the reason that I didn't put religious freedom is because the Puritans, or the separatists at first, but then the Puritans 10 years later, 1630, they really do not want just free religion. They want freedom to practice their own strict religion. And they were very strict. That's why they didn't mixed with the natives that much. Instead of this religious liberty that allows people to see God on their own terms, to read the Bible for themselves, and allow the Holy Spirit to reveal himself through Scripture, they had a premium on theology. The middle colonies, such as New York, for example, would be a mixed economy and a mixed religions. So you'll have a lot of Jews, a lot of Protestants, a lot of Catholics, you have Quakers in Pennsylvania, you have very mixed religions there. 
And interestingly enough, each of the colonies will have their own state constitutions. Some of them will be more focused on the Anglican Church, the Church of England, especially the southern colonies. Others will be more Puritan, Congregational, as they'll call it. Others Quaker, like Pennsylvania. Slavery was not illegal in any of these states except for Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is the only state that had in their state constitution, or at this point was a colonial charter, that slavery was illegal because it was a, a proprietary, a sole proprietary. So William Penn was allowed to do that, to make a law, first state or first colony to do so. Last part, part four, revolution, patriots versus loyalists. So once the revolution becomes in question, people are reading things like Romans 13 and asking, was the American Revolution justified? Well, you have two groups. You have the patriots that say, yes, the American Revolution is justified. We should separate from Great Britain. And then you have the loyalists that say, no, we should not. We should stay loyal. And most of this history, you should remember from 7th or 8th grade. That's why we're not going into huge detail. But the patriots typically were merchants who wanted political and economic freedom, typically more from the New England areas, such as Boston, uh, was a huge state that was championing for independence early on. Ideas of John Locke, enlightenment, political theory of independence, the right to life, liberty, and property was a huge influencer. So was Adam Smith with his economic ideas of capitalism. And those two founders would really, those two political thinkers, economic, would really influence much of American identity. The Loyalists, on the other hand, valued British status and loyalty to the Church of England as well as to the Crown. And so if you were a loyal member of the Church of England, you no doubt were a little bit more of a Loyalist. Well, now what's interesting is that the American Revolution was not just Americans versus the British. It was also Americans versus Americans. About 50% of the Americans were patriots and the other half were Loyalists. So you have not just an American Revolution, but a real civil war happening. But equally, not in number, but there was division also within Britain. And that's really what caused America to be successful in the American Revolution. This is kind of America's or Britain's uh, Vietnam War, so to speak. Just like Americans were divided over the Vietnam War in the 1960s and 70s, Great Britain would be divided over the American Revolution. You will have those in Great Britain called the Whigs that believe in colonial rights and patriotism of the patriots. And then you'll also have those who are called Tories in England, in Parliament, that were uh, pro-British and thought that the American patriots were wrong. And so the Loyalists would have sided with the Tories. So that is it for the notes on this section. Just a brief look at the origins of American identity.